This is an SWX Sports presentation. The Gonzaga Bulldogs take on the LMU Lions. It's been a brilliant start to the season for the Gonzaga women, especially here at the McCarthy Athletic Center. And tonight they look to keep it going as the 17th ranked Zags host the LMU Lions. Hi everybody, Austin Getz joining you on the broadcast tonight alongside my broadcast partner, former Gonzaga player and coach, Michelle Clark. Michelle, you talk about the Zags and you know the big four names on offense, uh, Hollingsworth, Trong, Ejim, and Maxwell. Michaela Williams is coming into her own as a scorer though and she's adding a lot to this team. Yeah, she really is. Talk about the big four. Why not make it the big five? Let's add her in. We already know how good she is defensively, but I'll tell you what, she's starting to emerge offensively. Double digits in three out of the four games out She's had a career high 19 points versus Pacific in a close game recently. Man, she can make a big impact, and it's fun to see a player like that emerge halfway through this WCC season. On the other side for the Lions, it's been a bit of a rough season, just 5 and 15 coming in, but they have some talent on their roster, including Alexis Mark, a player who last year in this building dropped 21 points. Somebody the Zags are going to have to keep their eye on. Absolutely, they're going to have to keep their eye on her. She's a big player sitting at 6 foot tall. She's doing a great job of creating space down low. She averaged 16 points and 8.7 rebounds in her last games out, so she's on a good streak here, and she knows coming into the McCarthy Athletic Center, she's going to need to have a big game for her team if they want to stay close tonight. The Zags have not dropped a home game this season nor a West Coast Conference game. They look to keep that streak alive. Take a break and come back with starting lineups and tip off. You're watching college basketball, the Gonzaga women and LMU right here on SWX. Opportunity. Welcome back to the McCarthy Athletic Center. Get you your starting lineups, which are brought to you by Numerica Credit Union. Pay bills, deposit checks, and access your account 24-7 with digital banking at Numerica Credit Union. Plus, show your Bulldog pride with your Zags debit card only at Numerica. Federally insured by NCUA, equal housing opportunity. Usual suspects for the Zags, Kaylin Trong, Brenna Maxwell, Michaela Williams are the guards. Eliza Hollingsworth, Yvonne Ejim round out the forwards. For the LMU Lions, Nicole Rodriguez, Cassandra Gordon, Destiny Samuel, Kari Clark, and Alexis Mark. Zags come into this game with LMU winning their last 12 in a row. For more on that and more on their streak, we'll send it to the third member of our broadcast team, A.J. Howell. Hey, A.J. Hey, Austin, you're right. 12 wins in a row, significant for any program, but for this one, honestly kind of a par for the course. When you look at the list of the longest win streaks in the history of the Gonzaga women's team, 12 only ranks 10th 
Yeah, that's right, 10. The most that they've ever had in a row was 23. That team was the 0405 team that went 28 and 4 and somehow didn't make the NCAA tournament. The Zags do have a chance to tie and break the record if they win out this season, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. Back to you guys. All right, AJ, thank you. And Michelle Clark, a member of one of those winning streaks. And just what is it like when you're on a team that is feeling this good and playing such great basketball? It's awesome. You know, you kind of start to feel your flow. As a coaching staff, I can speak to that a little bit. You know what to expect at your players, right? You're not going into games blinded, like, I don't know, what are we going to get from this person or this person? There's consistency across the map, and I'll tell you what, it gives those coaches a lot of confidence going into every game. Yeah, I went to shoot around today. This Gonzaga team is anything but high strung or stressed. They are loose, they are feeling great, and how could you not? Coming in here, you know, a top 20 team, first place in the conference, haven't lost a conference game. I mean, they are just playing some great, great basketball. Great basketball and putting up good numbers, right? Like 80.7 from the free throw line, that's what they're shooting. I mean, you know, hey, if anything, we're gonna get to the stripes and we're gonna knock down a couple, right? You can at least fall back on that. Here we go, getting ready for tip off here. The Zags taking on LMU, looking for win number 13. As there you see Erica Hughes, the Loyola Marymount head coach in her second season at the helm of the Lions. Lisa Fortier on the other sideline in her ninth year. We are ready to go and we are underway from McCarthy Athletic Center. Austin Getz, Michelle Clark, AJ Howell joining you on the call tonight as the Zags will start out on offense. Maxwell left open for three. No good that time, a rare miss from beyond the arc. She shoots 54% from there, first place in the entire country. Great feed inside from Kaylin Trong, gets Yvonne Ejim an easy basket, and we are off and running. You know, LMU tried to pose that little zone for them. I'm not sure that's a great start for them with as many as good shooters as Gonzaga has on the outside. On the other side, there's Alexis Mark, highlighted her before the game. 21 points in this building last year. As Destiny Samuel takes over things now. Seven seconds left on the shot clock. Nicole Rodriguez stares down a three and hits it. The Lions take a one point lead. Nothing much you can do about that. I mean, Michaela, sure, she could close up a little bit closer, but she had a hand on her and she had all day to look at it, but I guess make her prove it from the outside. Rodriguez, the top three-point shooter in terms of percentage on these Lions. Something that the Zags will have to key on defense. Here's Eliza Hollingsworth who kicks it back out top. Strong with it now. Hollingsworth, she'll line up a three. That one's no good, hit off the back iron. And here come the Lions. Cassandra Gordon with it now. And that pass a little bit off, but it will stay with LMU on the baseline. Great job by Hollinsworth, though, getting a little tip on there. We've already seen a couple tipped basketballs defensively by Gonzaga. That's going to be a key to their success tonight is being able to get their hands on a lot of these basketballs. Rodriguez to do the inbounding. She gets it right back. Looked at a three, but Trong closed out. Good defense played by Kaylin there. Here's Gordon. Williams guarding, Gordon goes up, shot no good, good contest from Williams. Great defensive play there by Michaela Williams, just moving her feet, getting a tip on that basketball, beautifully done. And now we have an offensive foul called on Yvonne Ejim, jockeying for position down there on the baseline. It's going to be physical down low, Austin, right? I mean, Ejim, she's gonna need to be aware of that. They're gonna key, on, key in on her. She's a great player, and if they can get her into foul trouble, that's a win for LMU. She needs to stay composed, right? She's pushing off just a little bit. That's a, that's a tough call right there. But man, move your feet, keep your arms tucked. Don't let them get an easy foul call. Ejim guarding Rodriguez now. Left open was Destiny Samuel. She'll call for a screen, drives to the paint, pulls up at the free throw line, and gets the friendly roll. LMU looking very poised offensively, you know, running what they want to run, getting good shots. They're off to a good start. Here's Williams. Drives to the paint, puts it up, and can't get it to hit, gets her own rebound for a moment before it's ripped away by Mark, who tumbles to the floor, keeps her dribble alive. And now the Lions will settle things down. 
Rodriguez, cross-court pass to Gordon. She'll try from three. And that one's no good. Nearly got another friendly roll, but an offensive board put back up and in by Kari Clark. Great job by LMU pursuing that offensive glass, right? Gonzaga needs to do a good job of blocking out. You can't not miss a block out. Great start for the Lions, holding a five-point lead. Ejim nearly went out of bounds with it, was able to find Maxwell. Maxwell tries to return the favor. Brenna left open from three. That one rattles out. It's an 0 for 2 start, but a foul away from the ball. And Eliza Hollingsworth is down. Yeah, she took a hard hit there. I mean, you can see how physical the start to this game has been already. And this does not look good for the redshirt junior from Melbourne, Australia. You know, that. LMU player came down on her and her head just whacked back on the floor. You don't ever want to see that that early. As you get a look at it here, going for the rebound. It looks like LMU had, that LMU player had her hooked from around. That's, see it from this angle. She's hooking her from behind and just pulled her down. So we'll have to keep an eye on Eliza Hollingsworth as she will head immediately off the floor. It looks like the referees are reviewing it now. Going to take a better, closer look at what exactly happened. They did call the foul on the floor, so that was uh, what the stoppage was. It wasn't necessarily for the injury, quote unquote, but they are going to take a look at it, see if there's anything that needs to be uh, updated here as you see the Gonzaga coaching staff talking through this a little bit of a sluggish start. Yeah. If you've been on both sides of this timeout, both as a coach and a player, what's kind of the conversation Lisa Fortier is having with her team? I think the conversation she's having is, hey guys, defensively you're doing a good job of you know getting your hands on some basketballs, finish the play out, and that's with the block out. And then offensively, you know, LMU is going to run different stuff to try to stir them up and get them out of what they want to run offensively. They need to know when to push and have that transition offense and when to slow it down. Just be composed and run what they want to run and get the shot they want to see in that play. Well, tonight's keys to the game are brought to you by Northern Quest Resort and Casino. Earn your bragging rights at Northern Quest with more slot machines, table games, restaurants, lounges, and luxury hotel rooms than anyone else in the region. Northern Quest, yes, the best. More at northernquest.com. Michelle, you... Yeah. Have these as the keys for a victory for the Zags tonight. Yeah, and we're seeing it already a little bit. I think, you know, that transition offense, there hasn't been a whole lot of opportune breaks yet. We're still early in this first quarter, but transition offense is going to be key for Gonzaga um, in this game. They had a lot of that in their first outing um, against LMU at LMU. And then defensive intensity. We're seeing that right now with those tips on the basketball. They need to pick it up just a little bit more, you know, get a little more aggressive and dictate what they want LMU to do on that side of the basketball. Going to be missing their starting forward, Eliza Hollingsworth, at least for a little while. As again, if you're just joining us, she took a tumble and hit her head on the hardwood and immediately went back to get checked out by the trainers. We'll keep an eye on and see if she returns to this game. Right now, Gonzaga has the basketball, and there was also a foul called on the Lions, and you see the referee conference there discussing maybe in case there was a flagrant foul here. I, I'm guessing they're, they're going to have to call it a flagrant foul, um, and GU's going to have to shoot some free throws for that. I mean, I don't know how you get away with hooking somebody with their entire arm around their backside and pulling them down and not have it be a flagrant. Yeah, pretty obvious whether uh, Eliza had taken the fall, if she did or not. It was called mostly right away. It's just now the severity is the conversation here. Yeah. So we're here at the McCarthy Athletic Center, a building where the Gonzaga Bulldogs have not lost a game this year. 10-0 here in this building, 9-0 in conference, and on a 12-game win streak. As we get one more look here at the play that led to this long delay, you see Hollingsworth number 12 there as going to the floor with Kari Clark wrapped around her. This is a long discussion. I mean, it's a hard call to make, right? It, LMU, I will say, uh, give them credit. They have really set the tone on both sides of the court of how they wanted to start this ball game. But as a referee team, they need to set the tone as hard they're going to call it. There's the uh, verdict from the referee. You might have heard it there. The common foul has been upgraded to an intentional foul, which will lead to free throws. And 
got to think that's the right call there yeah. with uh, how it looked and, of course, the result. You don't necessarily want to take the result into account. Of course, you know, a foul is a foul is a foul, but didn't look good. Yeah, you know, Austin, if her hands were in the air and she was just doing a typical block out and maybe a little more aggressive in the, the backup in that block out, they, I could see the ref saying, hey, you know what, I don't think this is intentional. It just ended up not so good, right? But, I mean, when you, clearly it's visible on the screen, it's a right call by the referees. Her arm is clearly hooked behind Eliza. She's backing up, pulling her down. That's the right call. I mean, as 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 teams try to set the tone for the game, referees need to set the tone for the game as well as far as like how they're going to assess those types of situations and what calls they're going to make. Well, it'll send Kaylin Trong to the free throw line. Coming in for Hollingsworth, Destiny Burton seeing her first action tonight. Callie Stokes also on the floor. Brenna Maxwell taking an early seat on the bench. And you know, I, I'm excited for Callie Stokes in this game. It's a, it's a physical start and she's a physical player. I think she has a lot of opportunity here against this LMU team to step up and, and uh, create some damage. Lisa Fortier said that anything the team needs, she feels like she can plug her in if they need scoring, if they need someone to push the pace, especially if they need someone to rebound. That's uh, who she always turns to. And as Tron can't convert on the first free throw. Splits the pair, Tron does, and That'll be Gonzaga basketball trailing 7-3 here early in the first quarter. Austin gets Michelle Clark, A.J. Howell joining you tonight as we are back to the action. Stokes with her first touch of the basketball. Williams left open, she'll drive. Good defense there by Alexis Mark. And now Destiny Burton hits the floor. Ball still loose. Trong has it. Shot clock did not reset. Seven seconds remaining. Down to five. Williams will pull up from three. That shot well off. And that'll be a turnover for the Zags on a shot clock violation. You know, offensively, I thought Williams did a great job initially reading the defense on their first plane. She faded out to the corner as her defender went high, and I thought she had a shot right there instead of that dribble drive, and she got herself stuck on the baseline there and ended up turning it over. Loyal and Marymount, the early lead. As here's Rodriguez, puts it up and banks it in. Nine to three, an early lead for the Lions here. Zag still trying to sort some things out. Von Ejim. Trong will line up a three. That one's good, and maybe that'll get the Zag started off. Yeah, big answer there by Trong. Great screen by Ejim at the top of the key there to allow her to have some space on that shot. And yeah, hopefully that will get them going offensively and space the defense out just a bit. Trong, one of three top 10 scorers in the conference that wear a Gonzaga jersey. Here's a pull-up jump shot from Cassandra Gordon. That's good. Ejim, Trong, Brenna Maxwell, all within the top 10 of points per game. Williams will pull up, and that shot no good. Ejim fighting for the offensive rebound. Might have had her shot blocked from behind. It goes out of bounds. It will stay with Gonzaga. And now Ejim looked like she might have gotten poked in the eye. I think as they were going up for that, rebound she got slapped in the face as now we will have another stoppage it appears and it looks like Egypt might have to come out of this game you know LMU is really setting the tone here on the physicality in the game we see it on both both sides of the floor offensively they're being really aggressive they're dribble driving to the rim um, Gonzaga needs to do a better job of that dribble drive penetration you know, and help side defense be in there to at least contest. So now we'll have to keep our eye on Ejim. Zags without their two starting forwards. Esther Little getting her first minutes tonight. As there she is with the inbounds pass. Brenna Maxwell also back on the floor. Zags trail 11-6 here early on. Maxwell will drive, kicks to the corner. Here's a three from Stokes. That one's no good. It goes out of bounds, but will stay with Gonzaga. 
I like the action there by Gonzaga. They really did seem poised. They weren't rushed or anything. That was a good looking shot, but man, I would love to see them get the ball inside a little bit more. Bit of a struggle without your two top forwards. Trong in the corner. Gets it into Burton at the elbow. She'll try to feed it inside. Had it poked away. She was trying to find Little, but it's a turnover. And here come the Lions. Rodriguez to the baseline. Here's Clark. She'll put it up and scores. Excuse me, that was Alexis Mark on the basket. And it's a seven-point lead for LMU here with about four minutes remaining in the first quarter. Trong trying to answer, can't do it. Lions the other way, looking to push. Rodriguez, nice feed. Mark can't get the bucket as it was a great recovery on defense by Trong. Gonzaga escaped on that one. That should have been two points right there for LMU. A sluggish start for Gonzaga. Burton will try the jumper. That one's no good. I thought Burton had a little dribble drive there into the lane of the little shot fake and put the ball on the floor and get, get a little closer to the rim. LMU content to slow this game down. This has started exactly the way they wanted to, not in terms of the injuries, but the score and the pace. Here's Mark, and she will be called for a travel and that'll be a turnover for the Lions. You know, Gonzaga needs to answer back to LMU just a little bit. As aggressive as LMU is being offensively, I think GU has had just as many opportunities to do the same, but they're settling for that outside shot a bit, which is fine. They've got good shooters, but man, when you have it, you've missed a couple shots from the outside the last few trips. That's your time to put the ball on the floor and get to the rim. This will be a foul on the Lions away from the ball. Cassandra Gordon getting called to the foul there. Just over three minutes to go. Zags on the wrong end of a good start for LMU. Maxwell tried to run a quick action for her. Great feed inside, a little hot to handle by Little, but she's able to get it up and in. Just like that, you see how aggressive Maxwell was getting to the rim, dishes it off to a wide open player. That's what they need a little bit more of because that will open up the outside. A near turnover, but Rodriguez gets it back to Sequoia Ullman, her first action on the floor tonight. Here's Aspen Adams, the Mount Spokane product. We're at it momentarily, this ball's gonna be kicked and off of Esther Little's foot, that'll be a kick ball violation. Aspen Adams, a senior from Colbert, went to Mount Spokane High School where she had a great prep career. It continues here at LMU, now in her fourth year in this program. I'm sure that must be fun for her to be back here. I'm sure she's got a lot of family and friends in the stands watching. Absolutely. Here's Allman, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Allman hesitates. She'll kick it out, a short jumper, a little long from Gordon, no, and a rebound by Trong. Zags trail by five, trying to make it back to a one possession game. Trong, a screen from Little. Goes back to her, Esther again had the ball bounce off her hands, but she's able to corral it. Williams on the arc. Williams, free throw line jumper, short, no good. Ball's on the floor yet again, and this will be a jump ball. Possession will favor the Lions. Great job by Stokes, though, getting that inside position, give herself a shot at an offensive rebound there. Instead, it was a jump ball, and GU will have the next jump. And there you get a look at Adams. Under two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Now the Zags dialing up a little bit of pressure in the backcourt, but Sequoia Allman handles it well. And now we're going to get a charge. Great play by Kaylin Trong there to set up in the paint and just get ran over. That's not a fun play to take. <laughs> hey, great play all around, right? Trong takes the charge, but had the charge not been called, Little was right there on the follow-up. It would have been a steal anyway. So 
Gonzaga doing a great job of answering and picking up some defensive intensity. Trong driving, kisses it off the glass. A nice play from the senior from Houston, Texas. Another great aggressive offensive play attacking the rim. They're seeing some success with that. Now Michaela Williams just right up on Sequoia Allman playing defense. Here's Gordon. Gordon drives, puts it up, and can't get it to go. Ball tipped around and goes out of bounds. It'll be Gonzaga basketball with just over a minute to play, trailing just by three. I would say much better job the last few trips down the floor defensively by Gonzaga, containing that dribble penetration. But then when they get beat off the dribble, as we saw just there, that help side is there to contest with not only one, but two hands. Zags could tie the game with a three, or trim the lead with any kind of basket. Maxwell, and we got another foul off the ball. Basket, no good, and it's going to be a foul on the Lions, as that was Mark, I believe, running through the screener there. And that's the first foul on Mark. Well, Good thing Gonzaga is a great free throw shooting team because second quarter they're going to find themselves at the stripes quite often if uh, LMU continues to have this type of physicality. Sideline inbound for the Zags. Under a minute to go here in the first. Trong drive, loses her footing. And Williams was there to track it down, but it goes off her hands and out of bounds. A turnover there is... Looked like Kaylin just lost her footing there. Yeah, her foot just kind of slipped out from under and lost the basketball. Maybe there's a wet spot on the floor or something. Good sign for Gonzaga. Von Egem has returned to the bench. No sign yet of Eliza Hollingsworth, but they'll at least get their top score back, it appears, here in the second quarter. LMU. Played a great first quarter in the lead. Cassandra Gordon for three. That won't go. Maxwell comes away with the rebound. Shot clock off as they go the other way. Good pass. But Williams just can't handle it. It goes out of bounds. Good idea there, just a little off. Yeah, right idea. And we know that Gonzaga can transition, right? They're a good offensive transition team. But just threw the ball up ahead of her just a little too far and fumbled it. And missed opportunity there. Peyton Muma coming in for the Zags, getting Trong a few extra minutes of rest. 20 seconds remaining here in the first quarter as LMU content to take the last shot, I'm sure, and go into the break with that worst a three-point lead. Pressure coming. Lions able to break it. Mark to the corner. Now back up top for Allman. Five seconds. Here's Clark. Back to Almond. One second to shoot, and they will not get a shot up there. The Zags hold LMU scoreless over the final four minutes of that quarter, but they trail after one. 13-10, LMU in the lead. We'll take a break and come back. A bit of a surprising start.
tonight's Gonzaga basketball broadcast brought to you by Arby's, your delicious neighborhood meat crafter. Stop by Arby's today. Arby's, we have the meats. Bit of a surprising start if you were just looking at the records coming into this game as it is the LMU Lions, not the 17th ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs who hold a lead after one quarter of playoffs. You gets Michelle Clark joining you. Michelle, what is the conversation over there in that huddle? I doubt there's any panic on um, such a veteran coaching staff, yeah. but maybe a tad bit of concern. A tad bit of concern. You know what does concern me is that their shooting percentage in that first quarter, 26.7%, four out of 15. We're not used to that from this Zags team. I think we're gonna see something very different here in this second quarter. I'm sure that a big talk was keep going with that dribble drive. You see an open lane, get to the rim. Von Ejim back in the game and hitting a shot. A sigh of relief from this Gonzaga crowd as she had to leave the game in the first quarter. It's holding something, not sure if she had something in and uh, poked in her eye or her nose, but good to see it hasn't affected her shooting stroke too much. Yeah, no, it's looking real good. So leading by one as a shot is off as LMU has now been held scoreless for four and a half minutes of game time. On the other end, Zags quickly driving as there's going to be a foul as Brenna Maxwell heads to the basket. No continuation there. This, this foul will happen on the floor. And this is going to send Brenna Maxwell to the free throw line, not somewhere you want to put her. A 98 per oh, excuse me, not a shooting shot. Uh, we'll see that perhaps later in the quarter. I'm sure she'll get to the stripes at some point, right? Correct. As here's Ejim. And there's Maxwell in the arc, not a place you want to see her either. She leads the country in shooting from three as well. There's a pass that's intercepted. Good anticipation there by Nicola Rodriguez. LMU started off hot from the floor, but it's cooled off. Alexis Mark drives to the corner and now worked around the arc. There's Rodriguez with it. Rodriguez trying to navigate the paint, kicks it out. Mark will line up a three. That shot is good. And it breaks a streak for LMU of scoreless play. It puts them back out in front by four. That's the one thing, Gonzaga, their rotations defensively getting out on those shooters. If you're going to get beat off the dribble, you better make sure that backside and rotation is there to close out on some of those key shooters. On the other end, Williams missed a shot. LMU comes away with it. Peyton Muma guarding as there's a foul on the inside as Destiny Samuel went for the basket. It was pretty good defense, but I think Michaela Williams kind of leaned in and you saw her hands kind of tip over instead of staying straight up. Uh, you know, that's, that's a typical easy call for a ref to make. Michaela Williams gets the foul meanwhile, so it'll put Noel Yancey on the line. Just the third and fourth free throw of the year for Yancey is Erica Hughes, head coach of the Lions, going deep into her bench early on. Two for two trip for Yancey, and it's back out to a six point lead. Ejim, just a step inside the three-point line. Back to Trong. Trong driving, turnaround, shot from the free throw line is off. It's tipped out of bounds, it'll be Gonzaga basketball. Looked like that might have gone off of Von Ejim, but looks like it's staying with the Zags. Yeah, you know, that's the kind of action I love to see Ejim coming up and screening Trong at the top of the, the three-point line there from either side of the wing or at the very top. That's always good action. Ooh, nice pass from Trong into Ejim, who just knifed through the paint for that layup. Yes, and man, what an impact Ejim makes, right? Just her aggressiveness inside and just getting the basketball and going straight to the rim. And it looked like they were setting up Brenna Maxwell as a decoy or maybe a second option. Everyone was worried about stopping the three, and Ejim just ducked under there for the uh, basket. On the other end, LMU trying to corral this ball, but it's another turnover. Maxwell up to Trong. Trong lays it up and lays it in, plus the foul. Well, there's a good momentum shift for the Zags, something they've been wanting to happen here, especially in this second quarter. 
As it started on defense, as Maxwell poked it away, Trong tipped it to her. Maxwell returned the favor on the fast break. Great transition offense there. And a bit of a pose there. I don't think anyone has more fun <laughs> out on the floor than Kaylin Trong. <laughs> Trong, an 86% free throw shooter on the season. We saw her hit one of two earlier, now two for three after the make. And it's a one point game, Zags. Still trailing, but not letting the Lions getting too far ahead before they pull back in. No, and I was just going to say, man, I would love to see their three-quarter court trap here and just switch things up. I, I love it when they bring this to teams, you know, because it just throws them off. So LMU's in a bit of a flow, and they've got a rhythm, and then Gonzaga gives them the three-quarter court press, and it throws teams off their game, gives them something different to look at. I'm sure we're going to see a little bit more of that in this quarter. Well, you see so many eye-catching numbers for the Gonzaga offense, but I think it's fair to say that the defense is kind of a pedigree for Lisa Fortier as we see a three from Nicole Rodriguez. These Gonzaga teams are normally used to tightening the screws down on, on opponents. Yes, they are. As Stokes had to throw the ball away, Rodriguez with the basketball. Crowd wanted a foul. Trong guarding Rodriguez closely. Yancey in front of the Gonzaga bench. Destiny Burton all the way on the arc trying to play defense. Burton, good defense there. Deep three on the way is good from Destiny Samuel. And that's something that Gonzaga needs to take a little note of. Okay, they've hit a few threes now. Let's make sure that, A, yes, we're still continuing the dribble drive, but we're getting out and getting a hand up on those shooters because that they can't continue to allow. As we've got a moving screen call on Yvonne Ejim, she will pick up her second foul. LMU's fired up. They just continue to fight and continue to keep their neck in here and pushing forward. You know, just when the Zags thought they were having a momentum shift, LMU comes right back and says, nope, nope, we're still on top of this game right now. Gonzaga coming in, winning the last 30 matchups with the Lions. Obviously a long time to sort this one out, but LMU hunting an upset early here in Spokane. Leading by seven. Yancey. Mark will line up a three. That one's no good, but an offensive rebound by Amaya Oliver. Mark had another look if she wanted it. Instead, she will penetrate and get called for a travel there. Good defense by Esther Little coming out and stopping the drive. Yeah, and using her length, right? She had a hand longer than her and just used her body, got her hand up, used her length on that shot, and it deterred it. Zaga starting to sort it out on offense a little bit as Trong fires a three, no good. Offensive rebound, Destiny Burton can't get the second chance bucket. Still loose in the corner, LMU has it. Brenna Maxwell hits the floor. Crowd really wanted a foul there, but none will be called. Hey, it's been a physical game from the very start. I think, I'm not, I didn't catch all of that. It looked like maybe a good no call. I'm not sure how much physicality was on that play, but you can tell the Gonzaga crowd didn't like it. Cassandra Gordon will drive, and she will step out of bounds. Gonzaga working hard on defense. Honestly, at this point of the game, if you say your opponent has 24 points, not too bad, but just a very slow, sluggish, uncharacteristic offensive start. Yeah, not too bad. You're right, Austin, although they have allowed opportunities for LMU that just haven't been there for them all season, which, you know what, everybody who comes into the McCarthy Athletic Center plays better than they do, right? They get up for these types of games. This environment is huge. Zags trying to give these fans something to cheer about on offense here. Here's Maxwell. Step back, three-pointer on the way. That's no good, an 0-3 for 3 start from behind the arc. But what a rebound and put back for Callie Stokes. And she lost her shoe in the process. <laughs> Paid a price there, as that's what we were talking about. Lisa Fortier needs somebody to go in there and do the dirty work. She calls on number 10. Oliver, Stokes defending. Aspen Adams, the Spokane girl from the corner, no. And now we've got a foul on Stokes away from the ball.
Gonzaga coverage of the game brought to you by Primera as we take you back to this play just a few minutes ago. Steal on one end leads to a Kalen Trong bucket and the bump as that's Primera, a proud, Ponce, proud partner of the Gonzaga basketball. And one, and Kalen Trong striking a little pose as she hit the floor, Michelle. Always good to have fun while you're out here. It is a game after all. It is a game and you should have fun just like that, Kalen. That's that's what kind of builds your team, that momentum, you know, and gets them going after such a big play like that. Let's have some more of that. That's what GU needs here to close out this quarter. Four minutes and 19 seconds left. They need some more of that momentum to get them up going into halftime. The Zags had pulled it within one early in this quarter, but have now not scored in over two minutes. LMU, meanwhile, goes right inside to Aspen Adams. She's fouled by Kaylin Trong to prevent a basket. You know, very uncharacteristic shooting percentage for Gonzaga as well, shooting 26.7%, four of 15. That is not like them from the outside. Um, you know, I'm sure they're gonna make their adjustments um, and continue, what they should do is continue to pound the ball inside, whether from the dribble drive or inside to Ejum to try to get some of those easy buckets. Great feed from Adams to Oliver for an easy two. Great eyes there from the Mount Spokane product. Threading the needle. Halfway home in this second quarter. Zags once again trailing by seven here. Von Egen back in the game, drives, puts it up and can't hit it off the corner of the rim, gets her own rebound and puts it back up. And that's the game play right there, Austin, okay? Space out, four out, Ejum inside, get her the ball and let her go to work. Wherever she receives it, whether it's a jump shot or a dribble drive like we saw, she got her own rebound on the first shot. That's the game plan for the rest of this second quarter. A nearly impossible task, whoever has to guard her. As now we have a foul on Mark as Brenna Maxwell was interfered with as she tried to go over that screen and that will be two on Mark. And that's an easy call for those refs, right? They're setting a lot of screens and I'm sorry, when you set that screen, you gotta stop and set it. You can't keep moving into those players. That's an easy call for a ref to make. So second foul on the second leading score for the Lions. Here's Maxwell. Williams, top of the key, had a shot, instead passes it up. They go right back down to Ejim, guarded by Oliver. Ejim in the lane, gets fouled, but can't get the basket. But again, hey, until they find an answer for her, just get Yvonne Ejim the ball inside and let her go to work. Ejim will head to the line. Right around 80% on the season. Nobody has shot more free throws than the Gonzaga junior. As number 78 on the season is through. You know, after she makes this shot, I'd like to see that three-quarter court trap there by Gonzaga. <laughs> see if they'll set up into it. As Ejo, after making the free throws, will head to the bench. Three minutes to go here in the first half. Rodriguez loses her foot, and there will be a foul called. Does it look like she might have traveled there? Instead, it'll be a foul. I believe they got Michaela Williams. You know, that's a tough call from that referee's angle there. It did look like Michaela had a bit of a body on her, but to be honest, I think she just tripped up and kind of rolled her ankle and lost control of the basketball. Second foul on Williams, and it'll put Nicole Rodriguez on the free throw line. Here you get another look at the foul call that led to this. See, she trips up right there. That's not a, I mean, that's a tough call. I mean, because she tripped up, Michaela kind of pushed into her, but that might. Well, the crowd approves of the 0 for 2 start, but meanwhile, it's an offensive rebound. Allman for three, that shot no good. And now it ricochets out of bounds. It'll be Gonzaga basketball. 
And they got away with that one there. Two minutes and 53 seconds left. Gonzaga needs a score, a stop, and another score to try to finish this quarter out. Here's Trong. Maxwell. Drives and lays it up and in. Great job by Maxwell, recognizing that lane, taking it all the way, still looking for her partner. She's still looking for her teammate for a dump down, but she took it all the way to the hole. Great decision there. One point game. Rodriguez takes a shot, no good. Burton comes away with a big rebound and just swats away the defense. Zags could take their first lead of the game. Big possession here. First lead since 2-0, I should say. Here's Maxwell. Off a screen from Little. Pulls up from the elbow. Shot a little long, no good. Oliver, a tough rebound down low. And the Lions come away with another stop. Rodriguez, mid-range jumper, well long. Trong with the easy rebound. The other way with pace, Trong. Picks up her dribble, now throws up a shot and gets it to go. And the Zags take the lead. I love the aggressiveness by Trong, dribbling in there. She found herself, you know, in a little bit of trouble on the baseline, used her pivot foot. Oh, okay, I'll do a little fade away here, jumper. Good that's if you a, can get it. Yeah, that's a sign of a great player right there, playing with confidence. This McCarthy Athletic Center crowd all the way into it now. Just over a minute to play here in a tight game. Great cut. Oliver blocked from behind by Maxwell. Brenna the other way. Maxwell settles things down under a minute to play here in the first half. Zags holding their first lead of the second quarter as now we've got a foul on Aspen Adams. Yeah, that was a great call. Great job there by Gonzaga. Good defensive play there. Nice block from behind. Yeah, you beat me, but I'm behind you, and I'm going to take this basketball. Great, great play. So as I was foreshadowing to earlier, now we see Britta Maxwell on the free throw line where she is 53 of 54 coming into this game, leading the team, the West Coast Conference, and the country. And, of course, she misses the first one. That's all right. That You know what? That wasn't you. It's kind of indicative of the game, the shooting night that they're, the whole team is having. She's going to knock the second one down. You knew she wasn't going 0 for 2. No. I don't think that's in her not. repertoire. No way. Zags holding a two-point lead as now they'll dial up the defensive intensity for the last 40 seconds of this first half. As that's Noel Yancey with the basketball. Now Rodriguez. She's had a lot of action here in the first quarter takes over. Oliver, the transfer from USC. Her shot partial locked by Little. And now the Zags will bring it the other way. They can hold it for the final shot. Great defensive play there by the Zags. But I say, stop, score, stop, right? They missed one offensive possession where they could have scored. But hey, they're on top right now and they get the last shot. They fought tooth and nail. Ten seconds left in the half. Stokes. Maxwell. Step back. Three. That one's a little long. And it'll be taken away, and that is how the first quarter, first half, I should say, will end. Gonzaga trailed early, but Michelle, they were able to fight back and now take a two-point lead in the locker room. There's worse situations to be in. Yes, there are worse. But, man, did they have to dig deep and really fight to get back to be up by a couple points going into this half. But that tells you the character of this team. You know, they are still very poised. I don't think they're frantic. They weren't frantic about trying to get back into this ball game. But, man, I'll tell you what, I bet those coaches are going to be telling them something different at halftime here. Okay. As we'll send it over to A.J. Howe, who has head coach Lisa Fortier. A.J.? Hey, guys. All right, coach. You were without your two starting forwards for a while. Your shots weren't falling, but there was fight in this team to come back and take the lead. What can you say about that kind of grit from the ladies on your bench? It's funny that you use the word grit. We've been talking a lot about grit. And for us, that means every day, every play, you know, you have to do the things every single time. And, and it was gritty in, in the ways that we use it, in the ways that, that you're using it right now. Um, a gritty performance by the players that we did have available. And, um, you know, I, I'm glad that they didn't give up because they came out real physical to start. And 
All right, the Lions seemingly had an answer for you guys at least early on to almost everything. When it looked like you guys were getting momentum, they would take it back. What changed in the last couple of minutes, and what are you guys trying to change for the second half? We got some stops. You know, for a while we weren't stopping them very well, and uh, we settled in on offense. We got the shots we were looking for. I think our first couple of shots were kind of just, you know, random. And we, we have a system, and we know how to play offense together with each other, and we need to do more of that. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. As the Zags were down early, but they fought tooth and nail, and they. at Coeur d'Alene Casino for a mouth-watering steak dinner, pampering spa treatment, or the hottest games around, Coeur d'Alene Casino, a proud sponsor of Gonzaga Athletics, Coeur d'Alene Casino, welcome home. Well, that video was put together by our old friends Jocelyn uh, Meyer and Jordan Kasky, featuring the 2009 and 2010 Gonzaga women's basketball team, one of the most successful teams in program history, and one of the players on that team going to be honored by Gonzaga on that Saturday, uh, Courtney Vandersloot, becoming the first Gonzaga women's player to have her uh, her jersey raised to the rafters here. And, and just what a player, and I know somebody you know very well. Yeah, I mean, she's a phenomenal player. Her stats speak for herself. Right, but her character, the person that she is, I know a lot of people don't have the pleasure of knowing that, but her teammates do. I, I had the opportunity to play with her, to coach her. I mean, I don't know if I would say I coached her. She's, I mean, she's one of those players that can coach herself, right? But just an all around amazing person. I'm so excited that we finally get to retire that jersey up into the rafters for her, you know, and acknowledge the career and what she brought to Gonzaga basketball here, you know? and. So many different levels, like I'm not sure if anybody can contend with her. I mean, maybe 
I mean, we're seeing all these highlights of her scoring. That's something she was great at, but maybe one of the best passers yeah. we have seen from Gonzaga ever. I mean, just a, a, a ridiculous vision, yep. feel, yep. chemistry with her teammates, whatever you want to call it. Oh, yeah. I mean, her vision, it was like you just need to have your hands ready for Courtney because she sees you before you ever saw it. And I think she was also a great shooter in college, but I think her passing ability in college was at the highest level you will ever see it. And it's cool to see, though, at the professional level, level you know, working with the uh, Chicago Sky, her shooting has just skyrocketed. Yes. Uh, WNBA champion, Gonzaga legend, and soon to have her jersey up here in the Raptors. We'll take a break and come back with some more of your halftime coverage as we head to break with a look at the banner of one of the effects of Courtney Vandersloot. You're watching College Hoops, Gonzaga, LMU, right here on SWX. Tune in to SWX this Saturday for a pair of big local college basketball games. Starts at 2 p.m. when the Idaho Vandals host the Idaho State Bengals in a big battle in the big sky. Then at 4 p.m., a WCC clash as the 14th ranked Gonzaga Bulldog men travel to Portland to take on the Pilots. It's a big day of college basketball live this Saturday, only on SWX, your home for local sports. It's a tight one here at the Kennel, two point game. Gonzaga's leading. We'll take a break and come back. Third quarter action right around the corner, right here on SWX.
Back here at the kennel, just a couple minutes away from getting the second half started as the Gonzaga women lead LMU, but just by two points, and it took one heck of a comeback as Aussie gets Michelle Clark joining you. Michelle, not pretty numbers here if you're looking on the Gonzaga side of things. No, not pretty numbers, not typical numbers either that we see from Gonzaga. One of nine from the three-point line, that's not typical of them. And 11 of 30, 37% from the field. I guarantee you the coaches addressed this. They said, hey, let's continue to do what got them the lead at the end of that second quarter. Get the ball inside to Ejum. Maxwell, continue to stay aggressive off of that dribble. Same with Trong. Get yourself to the rim. Stretch the defense, and the outside shot will fall. They are great shooters, but let's just get the ball inside, and eventually that shooting percentage should look a lot better. Yeah, you see the size differential represented here in terms of Gonzaga being the bigger team. A seven-point advantage, or seven a tally advantage in the rebound category and eight points in the paint more. You really see how the size can be represented, especially on a night where maybe it just seems like some of the shooters don't have it going, but there's two schools of thought there. One, we go away from the three-point line, or two, we keep shooting them, and eventually they start falling. It'll be interesting to see yeah. what Gonzaga pulled out. I know shooters like uh, Brenna Maxwell and Kaylin Trong are going to want to let them fly. Yeah, for sure, but they're also very disciplined players, so I think they're going to say, all right, coach, Yep, you want me to get inside? Let's do that first, and then let's try those shots from the outside. You know, another thing that stuck out, Austin, was those rebounds. Gonzaga's done a great job of staying on the glass. They're 20 rebounds to LMU's 12. They've done a good job on the offensive glass, just staying aggressive. You know, that has kept them in that in that rat race there to, to give them that two-point lead at half. Same starters for Gonzaga, except for Eliza Hollingsworth. If you missed the first half, she went down earlier in this game as Aspen Adams tries a deep three and hits it. Hollingsworth went down early in this game and has not returned to the bench. We will see if maybe she can come back at some point, but at this point, you're figuring you're gonna see a lot of Esther Little uh, from here on out. Nice two-man action there from Ejim finding Strong for the layup. Yep, that's perfectly executed, exactly what you wanna do right out of the gates. On the other side, LMU went right for the Spokane girl, Aspen Adams, who drilled a deep three on the first possession. Here, Cassandra Gordon drives. Good contest on the inside by Ejim, and she missed the shot. Great athleticism by Yvonne Ejim getting up and blocking that shot. Now Ejim with it, just outside the paint. Trong open for three, she'll try it, she hits it. Splash as Kaylin Trong gives Gonzaga their biggest lead of the game at four points. Yeah, that was huge, right? But it started out with that layup, that cut little dump down layup for her, and it opens up that outside, and man, did she take advantage and knock it down. Trong, a 38% shooter from behind the arc. As here's Aspen Adams, a good shooter in her own right. Rodriguez. Drives, gets little up in the air, pass partially deflected, but finds its way to Kari Clark, who knocks it in. On the other end, the Zags holding a two-point lead. Maxwell inside, Ejim going to work on Clark, gets the uh, foul call, I should say, and will head to the line with two hard-earned free throws. I'll tell you what, Yvonne Ejim makes that look easy, but man, she is so athletic. She had, you know, I, I wouldn't even call it great positioning down low, because it wasn't. She was getting forced more baseline. She caught that basketball almost clear under the hoop, but jumped up, created some contact, and got herself to the free throw line. Yeah, that's a situation where you don't want to be in as a defender, where you're playing good defense and you end up on the losing end anyways. Yep. As Ejim can't hit the first free throw. Again, a great free throw shooting team is Gonzaga, but it's kind of indicative of this game that they're having with this just tough shooting night for them. Meanwhile, the foul on Clark that led to the free throws was her second. No one really in foul trouble on either side. Nobody with more than two fouls in this game. LMU trailing by three. They go into Samuel, and now Adams tries a quick release three. That one's off a little bit. Little tries to chase it down in the corner. It's kept alive for a moment. Good hustle there, but eventually the possession will head Gonzaga's way. You know, I understand uh, for Aspen, you know, knocking down that previous one. That one was a forced shot. If I'm the LMU coaches, I'm going, hey, well, that's not the shot that we want. You know, I know you're feeling it. You're in your hometown, but hey, let's make sure that every shot counts. 
as that pass deflected. And this one will be thrown into the backcourt, and that'll be a turnover on Gonzaga as Kaylin Trong whipped it a little bit wide of Esther Little, who was open on the arc. Yeah, maybe one too many passes there. I thought Kaylin Trong was open in the corner. Maybe it was a little bit too deep baseline for her to get that shot off, but needless to say, one dribble, and she could have just had a little jumper. One possession game. A couple of Washingtonians going at it there, Aspen Adams and Brenna Maxwell. Here's Rodriguez. Pass intercepted by Ejim. She read that like a defensive back. Michaela Williams in the corner, underneath. And Little goes up with the size advantage and gets the basket. Great job by Little, posting up big, getting her hands up high, saying, hey, yeah, give it to me. I'm right on the block. It's an easy two. She had the size advantage over Adams by four inches, according to the roster. Little, six foot two, great size for a player to play the guard and the forward. As here's Clark, Clark, short jumper, little flat, and Little gets the rebound. Great defense. You see Gonzaga just chatting it up a little bit more defensively, helping the helper, working as a team. Here's Trong, pull up shot, a little awkward, no good, but Little's there to chase down a rebound. Trong over to Michaela Williams. Esther at the elbow to the corner. Trong, pump fake, gets her defender in the air. Back out Little. She'll try the three. That one's no good. And a good defensive possession there by LMU. But look at Michaela Williams working hard to try and get the ball in the backcourt. LMU able to come away with it, though. Look at how athletic Yvonne Nijem is. Guarding the point guard right there, shifting positions. That I mean, come on. Do you have? Most teams don't have a five who can guard a point guard like that. Gonzaga does, and it has been a great benefit for them this season is now Michaela Williams is going to get whistled for a foul here and that'll put Kari Clark on the line. And that'll be number three on Michaela, so she'll head to the bench. She didn't like that call either. She, you can tell she was contesting it with the referee a little bit, like, man, I didn't even touch her, but needless to say, there was a little bit of body there and she got called for it. Lisa Fortier going deep into her bench early here in the second half. Kelly Stokes, Destiny Burton, Peyton Muma all come out on the floor for their first action here in the third quarter. Meanwhile, Clark toes the line. That one takes a trip around the rim and goes down. Clark coming in with not a lot of trips to the line here for a 19-game starter. Just her 14th free throw the last try. Here comes number 15. Two for two trip, trims it back to a three-point game. And now we kind of see the script flip from the first half. In the first half, it was Gonzaga not letting LMU pull away, and now the Lions have done that story here on defense. Yeah, and you know what? To the Lions' credit, if you're going to come in here and get a win on Gonzaga's floor, you're going to have to have a pretty stellar game. And so far, LMU is really putting up a good fight. Stokes to Burton. Destiny corrals the basketball, trying to feed it, jump inside, and it'll be off a of foot. It'll stay with the Zags. As you can see, a little bit of a struggle getting into the offense without Kaylin Trong out there, the point guard. Yeah, it's amazing how much that floor general really directs their team and gets them in the right spots. Burton to Muma. Muma, closely guarded. Williams lines up from three. That one's long. Callie Stokes working for the rebound, but she stepped on the line, and it'll be LMU ball. You know, great recognition there, but still Michaela Williams, she's not a three-point specialist. We haven't had a lot of three-point shots get knocked down. I would have liked to have seen her give a pump fake and a dribble drive and maybe a dish. But rough start to the game for her. She's missed her first six shots. Stokes. Nearly got the steal, but LMU able to recover. Sequoia Almond all the way out near half court now. Again, I like how GU switches up their defense a little bit, makes them use deep into the clock. As this will be tied up on the floor, maybe not, and it'll actually be a shot clock violation. I thought that they were going to call a jump ball. Instead, it'll be a shot clock violation and the Zags basketball when we come back. Three-point game here in the third quarter. You're watching West Coast Conference basketball right here on SWX.
Gonzaga Hoops play of the game is brought to you by MultiCare Health System. We actually have two for you tonight for our MultiCare plays of the game as we've seen Ejim and Tron doing a lot of work together as a two-man action. That one was off a nice baseline inbounds and this one, Bonnie just dropping it over the top. And that's whether you're at home or in the kennel, MultiCare team of doctors, nurses, and specialists partner with you all season long. Those are our MultiCare plays of the game. And really those two are kind of, I don't want to say carrying the team here, but you, you can tell that when this team gets into stressful situations, those two really lock in and know whether we need a basket to stop or rebound. Well, I think it's safe to say they're carrying the team offensively, right? There's a lot of other GU players that are doing a lot of the little things, the rebounds, the tip basketballs, defensive intensity, things like that. But man, I Yvonne Ejim and Trong are doing all things good offensively for the Zags. 27 of the Bulldogs, 20 or 36 points, I should say. Gonzaga in front by three, as here's Ejim. Going underneath Burton, her shot blocked by Clark. Destiny Samuel, excuse me, on the block there. Good recovery. The fifth year senior from Queens. Getting this three quarter court trap here by the Zags. I like it, you know, just switching it up. It creates a little bit of intensity defensively for them. Samuel drives. And she'll get called for a double dribble. She tried to step through traffic there, but good, well spotted by the ref. Yeah, and great job by the Zach stepping in there for that help side and, and giving her a different look to make her turn the ball over. Four minutes and 15 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Gonzaga holding on to a three point lead as here's Ejim. And she will be fouled as she drives to the basket. Amaya Oliver, a little aggressive on the defensive side there. You know, that is so hard to defend. When Yvonne Ejim faces you up on the baseline, she's got two points to go either right or left. That is so hard for a defender to try to, to keep her away from the rim. Destiny Burton, nice elbow jumper off the glass and in. Nothing but fundamentals there from DB. Yes, nice little box action, kiss off the glass, beautifully executed. Zags with a five point lead here. They fought to retake the lead from the Lions and now trying to hold it. Here's Oliver, Burton defending. Oliver has to pick up her dribble. Five seconds left and that'll be a turnover and that was all Destiny Burton right there. She just swallowed up that possession on defense. She really did and you know what? She, she was giving up a few inches in height there to her but man, did she hold her own. Great job defensively by Burton. Erica Hughes needs Michelle Clark, Austin Getz joining you on the broadcast. AJ Howell, the third member of our broadcast team as well. It's a five point lead for Gonzaga. Haven't had enough to pull away just yet. They're really buttoning down the defensive end, but would really like to see this offense come along. Yes, you know, and I think they're doing all the good things inside with Yvonne Ejim, as you see now, you know, running their offense. But man, wouldn't it be nice to add a couple good outside shots to go along with Yvonne Ejim's play tonight. Kaylin Trong, a likely candidate to do it. This time she'll bounce pass. How did that get through to Burton? What a feed. Beautiful feed. And Burton, nice and patient. She knew exactly what to do when that ball hit her hands. Destiny having a good game. Four points on the last two possessions. Ooh, nice move from Sequoia Allman. Here's Alexis Mark now. The 
Cole Rodriguez. Ooh, that pass goes through the hands of Amaya Oliver, and now LMU starting to turn the ball over more, something you cannot do as Gonzaga up to a seven-point lead. Yeah. Hey, great execution, you know, dribble drive in there, but, man, that was a flying chest pass to a close player down low. That's always got to be a bounce pass. That's basketball 101 right there. Von Egem will get a break as Gonzaga has held the Lions scoreless for more than three minutes now. Under three minutes to play here in the third quarter. Here's Esther Little, guarded closely by Oliver. Now Trong, Kaylin Trong to Williams. She'll try a three. That one goes. Michaela Williams, good time to hit your first shot of the night. It's a 10-point lead. Yeah, very good time. And you see her, her teammates on, on the bench just light up when that went through the net. Double-digit lead for the first time tonight for Gonzaga. LMU. Now in a little bit of a rush to stay in it as a big three-pointer knocked down by Rodriguez to trim it back to single digits. Yeah, that was a huge answer right there by Rodriguez. Kind of deflated everything Gonzaga had there from that three off of Michaela. Took a lot of the cheers right out of this building, but now Michaela Williams trying to add a few more. Pulls up, short shot, rattles out, and saved in bounds for a moment by Callie Stokes, but now it'll go out of bounds, but it'll stay with Gonzaga. You love Callie Stokes. That's, that's the kind of thing right there that Coach Fortier is talking about. She is just always in there on offensive rebounds, tips basketballs, 50-50 jump balls, you name it. Callie Stokes has always got her hand in there. A player that truly exemplifies that the stats don't always tell the story because on the, on the stat sheet, she's got two points, four rebounds, but her impact has been much larger than that. Absolutely. Here's Williams in trouble. Has to pass it out. She does. As Stokes in the corner, 10 seconds left on the shot clock as the Zags are able to settle things down. And this is the hands you want the ball in, short clock like that. Trong driving, puts it up, gets it to go! Because of that reason right there, right? Hey, get the ball to Trong, let her get an on-ball screen, and she creates that right there. End one situation and a chance to make it three. Boy, you don't see many shooter rolls that friendly where it hits the rim on the way up and goes in. Yeah, it that's, hit the front and just kind of trickled in. That's just the English on the ball. And now Trong up to 18 points, make it 19 on the converted three-point play. You know, what this three-quarter court trap is doing, not only just giving LMU something different, but it's making them use a lot of the shot clock, which is forcing them into shots that they don't want. Rodriguez will try it again, and hits again. But that's the downside to it right there, not being able to rotate out of those traps and find those shooters. Rodriguez is having an amazing night for LMU, and Gonzaga just does not have an answer for her defensively. She's got 14 points, her season high is 17. She's five of seven from the field. Now here's Stokes. Callie drives, puts it up, and gets it! Puts the foul! Great job again. Gonzaga just recognizing those lanes, staying aggressive, getting to the rim, and getting themselves to the free throw line. If there's one thing that opens up and starts knocking down shots from the outside, it's getting yourself to the stripes. Great job by Callie Stokes there, being aggressive, knocking it down. Giving, her sense, giving herself a second shot of three-point play. They said it's a little much of a cold night for us behind the arc. We'll get the three points the old-fashioned way. Yeah, there you go. As Stokes, the red shirt freshman from Redondo Beach, California. Can't hit the three-point play, but may have just poked the ball loose in the backcourt and led to a steal, it does. Maxwell drives, throws it up, and now we have a bit of a I think they got Brenna Maxwell for a charge. The referees were, looked like conversing. And yeah, they will get Brenna for the player control foul. They were conversing with their eyes. They were looking at each other like, you calling what I'm gonna call? You calling what I'm gonna call? It's the right call. She was set straight up. I mean, it was close. She wasn't set for long, but her hips were square. Less than a minute to go here in the third quarter. Gonzaga's best quarter of the night by far. As they've pulled out to a near double digit lead. LMU just trying to stay within striking distance. Nicole Rodriguez for 17 points, she can't hit it. Trong, the rebound, loses the ball for a minute and it'll go out of bounds, they'll say Lions ball as Trong I think was just trying to get that one up ahead and instead threw it out of bounds. 
kind of looked like she got bumped and, and the ball was tipped, but hey, the referee was right there, so maybe he saw it. So the Lions will get the ball back. Shot clock is off since there was a change of possession, so they can hold for the final possession if they choose. Zags playing aggressive defense. Yancey. Back to Rodriguez. Williams steps up for the challenge. Rodriguez drives, tries to find the cutter, and there'll be a foul on the pass. And I think that goes to Michaela Williams. That's number four. It is, and she heads right to the bench as that's a tough foul to pick up there with 10 seconds remaining in the quarter. This is a big defensive possession for the Zags right now with 10.5 seconds here in the third quarter. They really need to get this stop so they can hold on to that momentum going into the final and last quarter of this game. 10 seconds left here in the quarter. LMU trying to find a score. Mark onto the wing. Rodriguez for three. No good. And a second chance bucket. No, and it'll go. They'll get a foul here in the final .2 seconds. Crashing the offensive glass was Samuel and, or excuse me, was uh, Mark and she'll earn a trip to the line. I think Stokes got called for over the back there on that one, just tough positioning. They'll have a couple of free throws to close out the quarter here. Tough final 10 seconds to the quarter for the Zags. Yeah. Mark, a two for two trip. Brings it back to a seven point game as we'll head to the fourth quarter in a close one. Gonzaga looked like they were throwing a knockout punch there, but LMU stayed on their feet. Take a break and come back with the fourth. You're watching college basketball right here on SWX. Gonzaga fans of the game are brought to you by Idaho Central Credit Union. Idaho Central Credit Union, your financial success fan club. We've got fans of all ages here at the kennel tonight. Getting a good one, maybe a game that you were thinking might end up a little lopsided, especially with how the first game of this meeting went down in Los Angeles. But the LMU Lions have come here to the kennel, Michelle, and are really working to try and uh, pull out what would be a historic upset. It would be a massive upset for LMU to come in here and get a W on the road. And uh, you know, I said it earlier, 
anybody who comes into this arena and wants to get a W, man, they got to have the game of their life. Well, the Zags finally broke through a little bit on offense as here's Yvonne Ejim is going to be fouled quickly as they were trying to feed her inside. As the Zags finally found a little bit of offensive success, outscoring the Lions 20 to 15 in that last quarter, and that's what it's going to take. Not exactly still glowing offensive numbers, but the Zags have really tightened up on defense. Yes, they have. Ejim, oh, nice move, and can't get the shot off the window. Offensive board put back up, and we'll have a foul inside. Great job. There's Stokes again, right? Just cleaning things up, always keeping her nose on that basketball. Got the offensive rebound, tried to put it back, got whacked in the face, and she's going to have two shots here. Well, Callie was somebody, if you remember back earlier in the season, due to illness and injury, Gonzaga played a couple of games with seven players, yeah. two bench Two bench players, that's it. That's where Callie earned her first start in a win against Stephen F. Austin. Players like her, Destiny Burton, Peyton Muma, that experience, obviously you don't want the scenario having to only play with seven players, but you can see the experience yep. showing through with such young players, Muma and, and, and Stokes and the like. Yeah, but sometimes those scenarios, right, they, they ate themselves to players being able to have a chance to step up, you know, and, and prove themselves and, and find a role that maybe wasn't there before. Stokes splits the free throws, giving her five points on the evening. It's an eight-point lead as here we go here in the fourth quarter. Gonzaga, it hasn't been pretty tonight, but all that matters is a win in the end. That's what they've got their eyes on. Nicole Rodriguez, she's had a great game. Cassandra Gordon with it now. Gordon to Samuel. Three seconds left on the shot clock. Kicks it out. Adams wildly throws up a shot and didn't get it off. Shot clock violation wasn't good either way. LMU looked a little unsure of what they were running. That whole possession, Every all five players. Great job by Gonzaga just containing every single player and getting a shot clock violation. Brenna Maxwell, who's had an uncharacteristic quiet night shooting. But I liked in the second quarter how aggressive Brenna Maxwell was off the dribble. Now, Yvonne Ejim is back in the game, right? So they're getting the ball to her a lot more, but I'd like to see Maxwell still find that dribble drive again. Ejim, elbow jumper is good. She found Muma wide open on the arc, just couldn't handle the pass, but ends up making the shot anyways. And again, a 10-point lead for the Zags. LMU looking for some kind of answer to stay around in this game. Here's Gordon. She's knocked down a couple big shots tonight. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Samuel will try it from three. Can't get it. And Ejim comes away with the rebound. Man, another great sound defensive possession by Gonzaga. LMU just no lanes. Stokes again cutting to the basket and laying it in. Again, I love that aggressiveness. Just keep taking that ball to the rack. They're getting good things from it. Huge game for her as she has helped the Zags out to a 12-point lead, their largest of the game. Rodriguez out to Adams. Aspen Adams closely guarded by Peyton Muma. Trying to get free from her, and they're going to get Peyton on a foul here. Tough call there. And Peyton can't believe it. That is a tough call. I mean, Gonzaga again had him kind of locked down defensively. They're just all over the place on him. And, I, you know, that's a tough call. There was a little bit of body, and she was leaning into her. I, that's a 50-50 right there. She had her hands out well wide, yep. but showing that it's not just a hand check that'll get called out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Kaylin Tron, game's leading scorer with 19 points back on the floor for Gonzaga. Now Brenna Maxwell trying to go to work on defense on Adams. Adams, pass deflected by Trong, and then she'll pick up a foul. Knew it. It helped her <laughs> opponent up right away. As she <laughs> pass bounced off her hand. She went for the ball and <laughs> kind of shoulder checked her. That's just one of those tough breaks, you know? Yeah. It's like, man, the ball was in her hand. That just momentum going forward. Got called for a foul, but. Number two on Trong, so she'll stay in the game. Here's Noel Yancey with it now. Yancey 
Blocked by Ejim, she saves it though. And then blocked by Burton. Tipped ahead, Maxwell with numbers. Lays it up and in. And you hear this crowd just erupt, right? I mean, what a play. Great job by Stokes, just bumping it forward to her teammate to get an easy run out layup. Big momentum shift right there. 14 point lead as it continues to grow. Gonzaga trying to sink their teeth into this one. Nola passes well wide and a turnover. And you see the frustration to start to sink in on the LMU bench there, right? Oh, look at this. Beautiful defense, two awesome block shots. Great recognition of tip it forward to Maxwell. Wide open run out layup. That's one where you have to think about it for, you know, three or four dribbles down the court. Like, I better not miss yes. this. Yes. <laughs> Here's Strong, hesitation. Picks up her dribble in the paint, kicks it out. High pass handled by Stokes. Ejim on the baseline, mid-range jumper, pure. Pure, you saw it on her face. Yep, I'm just gonna line this up. She knew it was going in before it left her hands. And the lead continues to grow for Gonzaga now. Made their last four shots from the floor. LMU needs an answer. Step from just inside the line, shot no good by Yancey, and the Zags pull away with the rebound. Six minutes remaining in this game. Ejim. Trying to get the ball to Chong, she does. 10 seconds left on the shot clock, here's Kaylin. Pulls up from three, can't get it to go. And a foul inside as this is going to be on LMU. Brenna Maxwell went crashing to the Hardwood trying to pull down the rebound. Yeah, she did. And it's just indicative of the physicality this whole entire game has been between both parties. You know, Gonzaga really has to answer right back to LMU with their physicality as well. But Brenda Maxwell just flying to the court there. Amaya Oliver picking up the foul and heading quickly to the bench. Destiny Burton, tough angle shot. She got it. And now those outside little jumpers are starting to knock down for the Zags. Those that they weren't getting early on in the first two quarters, they're now starting to come. Join us on SWX next week when we bring you all of the pomp and competition of one of the most anticipated events in Spokane High School sports, the Greater Spokane League Spirit Week. It all starts on Monday when the Cheney Blackhawks take on the Rogers Pirates in the Railroad Rumble. Then Tuesday, Ferris and Lewis and Clark battle for Chuck, the most famous rubber chicken of them all. Wednesday, Shadle Park and North Central renew their rivalry as they fight for the groovy shoes. And it all wraps up on Thursday when Central Valley and University clash to see who takes home the stinky sneaker. It's GSL Spirit Week, live all next week, only on SWX, your home for local sports. Some oddly named trophies, but fought for like it was a national championship, if you've seen any of those games. You know, I was just gonna say, hey, only in a basketball town like Spokane can you get away with a stinky sneaker competition. I love it. Amazing. Well, it's been very spirited here in the kennel over the last 10 minutes or so as the Zags on a run here trying to put away LMU, hitting their last five shots, but almost more impressively, just putting a lid on that LMU basket. Yeah, which has been huge to start this fourth quarter and really sending a message of, hey, we might have let you get close, but we're not going to let you get the full meal deal. Sequoia Allman tries to break the drought. She can't. It's tipped out of bounds. We'll stay with the Lions on the baseline. 
Six seconds left on the shot clock as Allman did not hit the rim on that layup attempt. Here's Adams to beat the shot clock. Pulls up and misses everything. And another shot clock violation. Boy, some really impressive defensive possessions. Oh, clearly great defensive uh, possessions by Gonzaga. Holding LMU to zero so far in this quarter. Two shot clock violations. I mean, that's textbook. If you're Gonzaga coaching staff, you're saying, hey, guys, great answer. Talk about the grit that Coach Fortier talked about at halftime. And so now LMU going to come up in a press trying to force some turnovers. Michaela Williams able to handle it with ease. Trong. Goes away from the screen from Burton, now turns around at the free throw line. Floater in the lane, off the window, no good. Chases down her own rebound. Williams lines up a three, in and out. Little tries for the rebound, falls to the floor. She can't grab it. LMU coming the other way. Zags hustling back on defense. The kick to the corner, Rodriguez not able to take the three as Burton closes out and cuts it off. But she gets it back, now will try it. No good, gets her own board. Inside, Trong the steal. She leads the team in that category, comes up with another one there. No look feed to Little. Her shot is contested and a foul by Kari Clark, who can't believe it. She thought it was a clean play. Instead, Esther Little will go to the line. I'll tell you what, awesome. That, that is high basketball IQ there by Trong. Defensively to recognize, well, you know what? I can't get stuck behind you because you tower over me. So I'm going to sneak around the side and steal it from the front. I mean, that's not, most t players can't make those kind of plays. And then come down offensively and feed her, feed her teammate who got herself to the free throw line. I mean, Tron can just kind of do, she's doing it all tonight. And it just seems that whether it's the kind of players they look for in recruiting or of course the coaching staff for Gonzaga who has been together forever it seems, every player out on the floor always seems to know what the next step in the offense is, what the defensive play is. It seems like the awareness and the basketball IQ of all these players is so smart, but then you see an upper echelon play like that from Tron. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Little can't hit either free throw. LMU comes away, but time starting to run thin as we've got just four minutes remaining in this game. They trail by 18. Mark. Spins in the lane and gets the bucket. And quickly, Erica Hughes calls for her team to launch into a full court press. Williams, short jumper is good. That's the risk part of the high risk, high reward for yeah. full press there. But you know what? That was set up again by Trong, just taking a back dribble, patience, seeing the floor, forward pass up to Michaela. And she dribbles in for a knockdown too. Ooh, pretty spin move by Mark and she converts. Again, Williams breaking the press. Pass inside Burton, a little bit off, but Williams able to chase it down. Out to Trong with 15 seconds left on the shot clock to reset. Trong driving. Puts it up, can't get it to go. A little there for the rebound. Dribbles it out to Williams on the arc. The shot clock did reset. I wanted Little to go back up with that, but it, she probably made the right call in what the coaches are asking her to do. You know, use the clock, bring it back out. Burton goes up, can't get the shot, but there's a foul. And this will go against Nicole Rodriguez. Von Ejim getting ready to check back into the game. Britta Maxwell also back on the floor. Kaylin Trong, just a phenomenal game, an outing by her. Bringing her team up, staying consistent, having that grit. Burton knocks home the free throw. Last time out against the Lions in Los Angeles, Burton had seven points, which is her season high. And if she makes this, it'll be eight, a new season high against the same team. Nothing but net there. 
DB with eight points, and she'll head to the bench. And put a lot of work in. Austin, did, did they need that from her tonight too, right? Huge. With Hollingsworth being out. It has been a team effort all the way up and down the roster. As the Zags two minutes and 30 seconds away from their 13th consecutive victory. Give credit to LMU, they fought in this game all the way, but unless things start changing rapidly, it's looking like they're gonna be on the wrong end of another loss. Aspen Adams, pull up three, is good. Aspen Adams may be playing her last game here in Spokane in her career. She's a fourth year player in this program. Nice to see her knock down a couple shots tonight. Well, a storyline to watch over these last two minutes, and I was waiting to see how long until I'd bring it up. Brenna Maxwell has not had a game without a three all season. Does she have it here? She does! Yes, finally, something you project out gives you the right answer back, right? The streak lives. Brenna Maxwell has now hit a three in all 21 games, or 22 games now of her Gonzaga career, dating all the way back to her time at Utah. I wasn't thinking it was running it right then, but nice to get the prediction that was right, I guess. Perfect timing, perfect timing. They ran the double screen for, I wonder if maybe, uh, you know, maybe Craig Fortier or Jordan Green or Stacey Kleinsmith told Lisa, hey, we need to get Brenna yeah, looking Yeah, let's get her a here. shot. Let's get her a look over here. She got her feet set and ready. That was a beautiful shot, nothing but net. It's been a tough night for her shooting the ball. Hasn't taken too many looks. That's just her eighth attempt of the night, but one for five from three. Came into this game shooting an absolutely absurd 54% yeah. from three. Yeah. If you shoot 54% from the floor, you're an all-star. 54% yeah, from three is storybook level. Yes, yes. But you know what? Hats off to Brenda Maxwell because she did a good job of making an adjustment, right? Absolutely. She didn't just live and die from that three-point line. She still got the ball inside, dribble drive penetration, and waited for the three-point to see, open up. As here's Callie Stokes getting called for a hand check. We saw her dive on the floor for a rebound. I mean, she's not a person where if it's not a shooting night, she checks out mentally. Yeah. Nobody on this team is. No, no, that's not part of their culture here. Minute and 30 seconds remaining in this game. Gonzaga is going to improve to 20 and two to start the season and also 10 and 0 in West Coast Conference play as Rodriguez tries a shot from the corner, no good. Amaya Oliver gets the bucket and the putback. And she'll have a chance at a three point play. Oliver started her career at USC before following Erica Hughes here two years ago after Hughes, who was an assistant for the Trojans, came here for her head coaching job. And oh boy, we have Gianna Riley on the floor for Gonzaga. And an interesting storyline here. Oliver converts a three-point play. AJ, tell us a little bit about Gianna and why this moment is so special. Oh, man. So close there. Okay, so listen, guys. Gianna's actually a soccer player for Gonzaga. The coaches on staff are getting a little tired of running the scout team with all the injuries that the Zags have had this season. So they turned to volleyball and soccer. And Gianna is the one that won the award to get to come here play with the Zags. Pretty crazy. Of all the schools you think you might find yourself on the basketball court playing for, I don't know that Gonzaga would be one of them, but she's doing it. Hopefully see a couple points in this one. So her first action in the game was actually at the Gonzaga win at LMU, getting another chance to see the floor here tonight. And that basket, I hope she gets another chance as Aspen Adams knocks home a free throw. That would have been her first points of the season and of her career. She would have become a player to put points in the stat book for two different sports here at Gonzaga. I love She's that. also a forward on the soccer team. You know, we had a player like that that I got to play with, Elena Renius. She was a volleyball player and then played basketball as well. Gotta love it. Athletes everywhere, no matter the sport. Here's Maxwell with the ball as we're in the final minute here. Brenna drives. 
gets the ball right back. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Muma. Payton trying to find a space in the defense. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Brennan has to put it up. It's deflected out of bounds. It'll be LMU basketball. Well, to go back to what Coach Fortier talked about at halftime and having grit, man, did the Zags have grit tonight. And did they need to? LMU showed up with guns a blazing, coming at him with all kinds of physicality, and they stayed in the game, stayed gritty, uh, and the score reflects that tonight. And that's sometimes, you know, the mark of a good team. Not every night is going to be, you know, 60% from the floor. Right. You got to find ways to get stops. As this will send Ava Toon to the line with less than 10 seconds remaining. Next up for the Zags, they stay here and they'll have Pepperdine on Saturday. Two o'clock tip off here as they try and keep this streak going as two knocks home a free throw. This is also career win number 225 for Lisa Fortier, improving her record to 225 and 55. That's pretty stellar numbers right there. Man, that's anywhere in the country that would be amazing, and we have her right here in Spokane. It wasn't necessarily pretty for the whole game, but it is a win for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. 66-55, the final score here as they keep the streak alive. Tough one at, at points, but like you said, the grit, and like Coach Fortier mentioned it at halftime, and AJ mentioned it, the grit, just really impressive tonight. Yeah, absolutely, and they really dug in deep. I like to see that field goal, field goal shooting percentage go up. They finished the night at 46%. 59 from the three-point line, 33 rebounds on the game, and LMU dropped a little bit. They were hot to start. They finished with 41% from the field goal, 85% from the free throw line, 26 rebounds. You see there Gonzaga just crushing them on the glass, which could have been one of the biggest game changers for this game and that, that grit that we were talking about. Time to announce tonight's player of the game, presented by A to Z Rental. No job is too big or too small with eight convenient locations. We rent everything. Let A to Z Rental be your most valuable player, and we've got two tonight. Yvonne Ejim and Kaylin Trong. The dynamic duo tonight was special and helped Gonzaga majorly to get this win. It really did. You saw two seasoned players step up Listen to what the coaches were telling them, I'm sure. Get the ball inside. Let's go back to our bread and butter. Yvonne Ejim having an awesome night, getting those good inside looks, seeing the floor. And then Kaylin Tron just doing what she does best, seeing the floor, knocking down shots when the Zags needed it big time. And A.J. Howell standing by with Kaylin, our player of the game. A.J.? All right, Kaylin, you guys went in the locker room. You came out. We saw a completely different half. What shame? Um, we just weren't being as physical as they were. Uh, they were being overly aggressive, and that's what Coach Lisa was saying, but we needed to match that energy. And second half, that's what we did. So we saw on the other end of the court, you hit that and one, then you hit the low pose on the ground. Obviously, you were feeling it tonight. What was clicking for you when other things weren't? Um, my coach told me just to run the offense. Um, that's my job, and my team needed someone to run the office, so I wanted to get everyone involved. and. At the moment, I needed a score for in order for my teammates to be open, so. How bad did you want to see Gianna Riley make that layup at the end? Oh my god, I was jumping out of my seat over there. Oh, it was too short, but we'll, we'll get her another one. We'll get another one. Congrats on the win. AJ, thank you. That's going to do it for us as Gonzaga had a few tense moments here, but they end up getting the win. Michelle, some quick final thoughts as we're out the door. You know what? This is a good sign for a team going in, you know, towards the end of league play and as they're looking into postseason play, if they can put their head down and grind out of a game like this, man, postseason's going to be fun. Absolutely. Well, that'll do it for us here for the Kennel tonight. For A.J. Howell, Michelle Clark, I'm Austin Getz. Hey, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, we've got some Spokane Chiefs hockey on SWX as they take on the Seattle Thunderbirds from the Spokane Arena, so make sure you join us for that. One more time, it's a 66-55 win for the Gonzaga women. They keep their streak alive. Now 13 straight, 10-0 in conference and 11-0 here in the kennel. Once again, for AJ Howell, for Michelle Clark, our entire SWX broadcast team, I'm Austin Getz saying thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow night at the arena.